In this video, we'll be taking a look at using augmented reality to bring your designs to life. Stick around. None of this is real. Now this video isn't about a new project or a new product, but rather a quick demonstration of a new Fusion 360 feature. A feature that's a step in the right direction to bringing your ideas to life and leveraging augmented reality. While support for AR and VR has been implemented several times over the last few years, it's a strange new concept that, while promising and functional, still requires work to get past the gimmick and find core value in its application. Needless to say, this sort of technology evolves, and several have came and went in the past couple years, but nothing has stuck. One promising sign are standards, file formats and such. Things we can develop against, huddle around and build compatibility. But one of those is the USDZ file standard. Created by Pixar circa 2018, it's a universal scene description file that's zipped. Only this is a zero compression unencrypted file. Primarily useful in packaging and transmitting and sharing 3D data. The good news is other platforms are also able to export and translate the standard format. And one of those is Fusion 360. Now why would you want to do that? Well for one, simulating a product's design is faster than manufacturing it. And previewing it in a natural environment can really pitch the idea nicely. While you can simply import a backdrop and demonstrate a natural context for the model within Fusion 360, bringing the 3D model into the real world is a better option. And USDZ is the format for that. Over in Fusion 360, to export a design in USDZ format, it couldn't be more simple. But before we get to that, there are a couple considerations to mention. First, you'll want to be sure to check that appearance materials have been assigned to all of your objects. You'll want to use all the basic materials for now, avoiding things like 3D materials as the textures won't be included in the export. This may be a limitation of the Fusion 360 exporter as the format does support the inclusion of texture images. Side note, for more advanced conversions, there are better tools like SimLab, which offer advanced Fusion 360 plugins, and Composer, a full-featured low-code platform for creation of VR environments. These tools allow you to assign advanced textures along with object and light baking for greater control and flexibility of your design. I'll put a link in the description. Second, You'll want to be sure that your designs are in the correct orientation, with the Z-axis vertically. And to do that, I usually create a separate design, then link the model and orient it as needed. Most AR viewers do not allow you to change the object orientation, so this will prevent some problems you may experience down the road. Finally, in your orientation design, you'll also want to ensure that the model's bottom face is equal to the design's origin XY plane. Make sense? Again, some AR viewer software use this plane to determine where the bottom of the object is, and it'll save you some headache. Now with that, we can export a few designs and check them out. Simply open your file, then go to the File menu and Export. Select the location, and then select the type as USDZ. The export's really quick. And in my case, the files are all relatively small, ranging up to 16 megabytes for my most complex design. And while there are a few options to view the model in AR on your PC, things just got a lot easier with Apple incorporating AR and native support for USDZ files in their latest version of iOS, which at the time of filming is 14.5. Next, you just have to transfer them to your phone. I'll be using OneDrive. So I copy the files over to my shared folder, then a few minutes later, open up OneDrive on my phone and select the file that I want to view from the shared folder. As the viewers are integrated in iOS, it automatically knows what to do with the file. When the app opens the file, you'll see a ghost of your model through the magic of computer vision. The phone detects the surfaces and your model is dropped onto a surface. The integrated viewer has some simple capabilities. Use one finger to drag your object around, use two fingers to rotate it, pinch to zoom in and out, and double tap to return to 100% scale. Now, if that's all you want to do, you're set. You can evaluate your design in real-world context. Comparing your virtual design to a real-world object is pretty cool. They dynamically apply reflections and shadows and realistically simulate the local conditions. Pretty neat. Placing a real object next to the virtual object is surprisingly difficult to distinguish any differences, other than the limitations with texturing. If that's all you need, then you're good to go. But if you want to look at multiple objects at once, well, with the native integration, you're out of luck. But there are other options. In the App Store, you can download an app named, appropriately, AR Viewer. While the app has similar controls, there are definitely pros and cons to each. And while the rendering doesn't look as good as the native viewer, this does provide the ability to import multiple designs into the same scene and view them all at once. So for now, you'll have to decide what's more important to you. In general, both provide similar functionality, and as these apps evolve, we'll inevitably see improvements over time. For now, check it out. Being able to see your ideas in real life is very rewarding and maybe just the thing you need to inspire you to finish that project you've been procrastinating on. 
Well, that's going to do it for today. Now, go play around with Fusion 360 and augmented reality. If you'd like to support the channel, there are lots of ways to do that. For starters, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. It'll keep you in the loop on future updates. Or if you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up. This lets me know that you care about me sharing this kind of stuff and it's useful. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.